views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get fired up for Spirit Fire Radio, your guide to practical mindfulness and meditation. Join hosts Tim Darter and Steve Kramer and discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. Watch yourself connecting in a whole new way and find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now here's your hosts, Tim Darter and Steve Kramer. Welcome to Spirit Fire Radio. I'm Steve Kramer. And I'm Tim Darter. It's great to be with you. We are at Living Awareness. We are on the 14th step of the practice of Living Awareness. So we've been moving each week through each step of the practice of Living Awareness. And we're so excited today as it is the final step. We've reached actually the namesake of the practice Living Awareness is the step, and we're so thrilled to once again have Donna Mitchell Moniak on. She is the founder of Spearfire, and she's the creator of this wonderful method of meditating, this practice. And we're also joined by Lisa Rose Andrews. She is a practitioner. She's been doing the practice since the beginning, and we've heard wonderful things. She's been writing us great emails and telling us about her experience, and we thought it would be a really lovely time to have her on the show talking a little bit about her experience. So I just will just get straight to it and say thank you for joining us, Donna. It's great to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, both of you, and congratulations on 14 shows. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been really great. And Lisa, just say hi to you. It, it, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Steve and Tim. I'm a real fan of the Spirit Fire Radio, as you know, and I'm really happy to take part as a guest today. Well, we're we're really, really glad to hear from you. So I must say, Donna led a meditation this morning. We do live meditations nearly every day on Spirit Fire, and she led the most beautiful meditation uh, this morning on light. And, you know, living awareness is so much about light. There is uh, sort of a keynote of this step that says, I am a source of clear light. So I'd love to talk about light. It is, uh, it is the winter solstice. We've got a full moon approaching, and there just seems to be so much going on with light within this step and uh, in the world as we know it and experience it. So Donna, if you could just tell us a little bit about that, this season. The season that we're in is, of course, the season of light. This is why it's celebrated in by Hanukkah, by Christmas, uh, and even Kwanzaa celebrates light in the, by the sun, by the stars, by the inner essence of the heart. And as we are approaching, it just happens to be that the final step that we were on this week is coinciding perfectly because to live one's awareness is to live one's light, light of the heart, light of wisdom, light of compassion. And so this is a perfect coincidence again with the full moon, with the solstice, with the holidays. It just couldn't be asked better, right? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. So I love the meditation this morning. Um, I, I really had just such a peaceful, actually bright, bright experience. So I'd love if you could just tell us about, um, you know, granted, you know, I, I'm going to turn to you. I, I could answer these questions certainly after being a practitioner of, of living awareness for so many years. But I love to hear it from your eloquent voice. Um, tell us a little bit about that, about coming to realize one is light. And th- at this point in this in the practice, being the very last step, um, embracing one one's living awareness and awareness being living and alive in one's life. I'd just love to hear a few words about that. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, when we begin with a smile, which is the first step, we are invoking and experiencing the lightness that is in a smile. And when we start there, we experience firsthand that we can lighten up, that a moment 
doesn't have to be dense and heavy, but instead we can bring that lightness of being to it. And then, of course, we just simply massage that, grow that, open it, invoke it all the more, and begin to literally live from it. At least that's the hope of the practice of living awareness. So that then when we get to the final step, it's kind of like looking back and seeing all the ways that as a human being, all through the day, the night, every day, we actually have exactly brought forward more light from myself, more, we've had more clarity as a result through our day, our problem solving. We've had more patience with everyone because that's a form of light. And our kindness, our courtesy, our whole being has simply been kindled in its light. It's actually quite profound and I would, I look forward to when Lisa speaks because it'll be interesting to hear from a a new practitioner with this round, you know, how she has experienced that and if so. Mm. I love to hear that about the lightness of smile and I would agree that so many people remark on that. They realize that how powerful something so simple as a smile can be. It can simply change Mm -hmm. everything. And we make things so complicated, I think, these days. We think it just comes along with the territory. If you want big changes, it's got to be so complicated. And it couldn't be more contrary. Something as simple as a smile can tincture and change everything. Something really as simple as meditation, as giving yourselves, giving ourselves, you know, even 20 minutes a few times a week can change everything over a course of simply 14 weeks. So I love that you bring that back to the very first step in that noticing of something so completely simple. Mm-hmm. 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 And so, Donna, I'd love to also talk a little bit about the solstice. I mean, it is, it's, it's really this week is, is the darkest week of, of the year in terms of the light we see during the day. But it does seem to call something within us. You know, it, it seems... It's always within our darkest hours, some of us might know this from our life, that we, we find the light within. You know, it does seem to be that happenstance. And you talked a bit about that in the meditation today. So I'd love if, if any of that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. You know, when, as you said, in, it is in the darkest hour. I mean, there's some wonderful poetry and songs about the darkest before the dawn. And when we look at our own lives and see that for some peculiar reason, as a whole species, we learn through struggle. We learn through difficulty. Our greatest inventions come when we, out of necessity and problem solving. Greatest compromises are found because of war. And we simply arise to a difficult occasion when it presents itself. So for whatever reasons that I think certainly are beyond my kin, it just seems to be how we do it. And so when we look at the solstice, the solstice has both a metaphysical, if you will, kind of way to approach it, a symbolic metaphysical way. And that is, and this is how I generally approach it with the meditations, that the sun literally wants to set within us that on this day of the shortest light that we are to kind of make up the difference that we are to step into the fullness of our light and then be the sun self if you will and then that leads to the further symbolism very briefly of the solstice which is that the bringers of light the world teachers, the great beginners of world religions, several of them have been not just Jesus Christ, but Mithraeus as an example, Osiris as an example. These beings who are embodiments of light and bringers of the teachings of light, their births are set at the solstice. Mm. Very interesting, very interesting. Beautiful. Mm, So that simply, I'm sorry, that simply um, reiterates again that 
the light is within, or even the words of, of the Christ, uh, you are the light of the world. So it isn't that he's the, he is not the only person that has said that. It's simply a, re, a reiteration of a fundamental world teaching that is celebrated at every solstice. We, humanity, is the light of the world. We are the sun that needs to rise up. And, you know, light is such an important part of the practice, and it's such an important part, such a beautiful uh, sort of happenstance that goes along with meditation that at some point, you know, we, we just close our eyes and we sense the light within, the sense the light behind our eyes, and it's just generated and, and built to this beautiful crescendo through through meditation and actually you know i guess that's such a dramatic word to say sort of crescendo because at times it can be so peaceful as well and just so calming but such an aspect of our meditation is light so it is rather perfect that we have uh very beautifully gotten through a full round of the practice of living awareness in 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 the um in the 14 steps and ending at solstice and Hanukkah, Christmas, and as you say. So I would just love to say, we're going to go to a break in a minute, but I would love to just tell the listeners who might not know that uh, each week is a different step of the practice, and we have been inviting guests, and we're going to do a little bit of a, of a summary later on in the show of kind of our highlights and things that, that, that stick out in our minds as real favorites uh, from the practice. But each week we invited a guest on the show who emulates the essence of that step. And if each step is sort of a tool within our tool belt, one would say that their passions or their careers um, has them pulling that tool out of their tool belt quite regularly. So it wasn't so much that each show was about meditation exactly, but it was about the ways in which meditation and tools of meditation express in the world. And so it's just been a beautiful 14 weeks and a beautiful round and so we're going to go to a break, and when we get back, we're going to hear a little bit about the round from Lisa Rose, who has been, um, who's been doing the practice uh, from the start. So more when we get back. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basili as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine On Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. And we are joined today with the founder of Spirit Fire and the, uh, the woman who developed the practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice. And today we've got Lisa Rose Andrews with us. Yes, and she's just finished the round for the first time. Lisa, welcome. Hi, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm great and uh, really, really happy to be on the show today. I'm flattered that you've asked me, and um, I actually, as, as usual, have a lot to say. Oh, yeah. looking forward to this. 
so how was this round for you? Was was meditation new to you? Um, yes and no. I guess looking back, um, I've always had an innate attraction to the process of meditation. Um, I tried a version of group meditation in the 1990s, a long time ago, and it turned out for me to be a rather disconnected experience uh, in retrospect. I think I might have lacked the right guidance in that setting, but perhaps it just wasn't the right time for me. I and mean, when we talk about um, being ready or receptive, actually one of the steps of the, of the practice. So um, I really didn't pay attention um, directly to meditation for a long time. And then I came upon it again via spirit fire. And how did it, how was it this time? Um, it was great. Um, I actually, just to, I'll take a step back, I had an opportunity to um, participate in a retreat at Spirit Fire, and yes. this is before I had a, a, what I would call a daily meditation practice, <clears throat> and this was back in September. I wasn't sure if I was prepared to do it, um, and, I, and I, I'm guessing a lot of people have the same experience, sort of, oh, I'm not sure I know how to do it, I wonder what that's all about, a little bit of mystery. But I pushed myself a little bit. I jumped in, and it was an incredibly positive experience. Um, Donna led that retreat. It was called the Path of Meditation. Um, the concept and the process, it, it really clicked for me. So it was after that that it was easy to commit to Spirit Fire's online classes, mm -hmm. um, the 14 Steps of Guided Meditation, and that is the round that I've just completed. I think... You know, to go back to my point about being receptive, I think it was my time to be receptive to meditation. And um, particularly with Donna's guidance, um, the ideas just got fine-tuned, and um, it was really exciting. And I, I, I have to, oh, I'm sorry to cut in, but I just have to admit, no, no. you know, I was, uh, it was the same for me in that uh, the very first time I went to Spirit Fire for a uh, retreat was a meditation retreat and i can say your words were so perfect that it does feel like you're stepping into a mystery and mm -hmm. uh, i love to hear that because in a sense what i'm also hearing and i'm sure you'll allude to is it actually it's not as mysterious as we think <laughs> you know it's it's we we live with our mind every day it's something we know well we just don't all realize how well how well we actually do know it precisely and i and i think that as with a lot of other things you need to push yourself a little bit. You need to go out of your comfort zone. And, um, and I really did that when I went to the retreat at Spirit Fire. And I am just, you know, eternally thankful that I did because it opened up so many doors. And honestly, at that point, I, I, I just had to start meditating. It really gave me um, some of the starter tools. It gave me the incentive. I started to sense that there was something out there, a light that that I really wanted to have access to. And I mean, that's really the best way that, that I can, that I can express it. Mm. And I have to give you a, a pretty big congratulations because you, you really, you, as far as I know, you were meditating almost five days a week. Uh, <laughs> you know, we offer live meditations on an entry level basis, which is Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And then we deepen those on Tuesday and Thursday. And they're open to everybody. If they feel they can hang with the intermediate, then you're welcome to hang. And you hung with the whole week, almost every week. So, you know, you now are carrying around this tool belt. Is it heavy? <laughs> right. Well, th that's, yeah, that's funny that you, that you mentioned that because I sort of just did it. I felt a little bit like, hmm, I wonder if I need permission to do that. But um, at, when I was at the actual retreat, I was talking to a, an experienced practitioner who um, was a participant in that retreat. And she said, oh, I do both of them. Just, just do them all. So I just thought, sure. And, all, you know, I have to say, I'm, I'm not a person who easily commits to routine or I can't keep an exercise routine. If that stuff doesn't come easily for me, I have a very uh, busy, busy life. Uh, but this, uh, honestly, I made a priority every morning at 9 o'clock. It's a very short period of time. It's, you know, a little bit less than 30 minutes on a daily basis. And, and yes, I did it. Um, I think maybe I skipped, maybe I missed one in the in the, uh, the course of this meditation, but well, um, from working for me. <laughs> well, it does take commitment, and I'm sure Donna would have a few things to say to this. You know, as much as we say it's so easy, we also have to commit to these things. You know, we have to say, well, if I want to see some change, 
you know, I've really got to make a decision, Donna. I know you've got a few things uh, perhaps to say about that. Yeah, one of the factors is simply it's a gift. You know, discipline is a gift that we can, that only we can give ourselves. Meditation is a gift only we can give ourselves. And the results of meditation, the, both the benefits as well as the ongoing opening and unfolding of our humanness is what's going to result from meditation. Well, who can give that to us? No one. Only we can give that to ourselves. And Lisa just spoke so happily joyously and beautifully about her experience you know that says it all yeah i would agree (laughs) it definitely says it all and i love that you talk about the unfolding because it's not Mm -hmm. as if the gifts don't really show themselves right away you know it really is a process and it's not only a process we learn at our own time but as we move through each step which is really quite scientific and method method Tim, help me out. Methodical. Methodical. <laughs> Methodical. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Woo, I'm tongue-tied today. It, you know, with each step, it really does unfold. So that commitment has got to pay off, I find, each week. And I know I could, for myself, every Monday I was so excited to start a new step. When I first started, I thought, oh, wow, there's a, you know, there's a new step coming. I feel like by Friday I've aced it, and by Monday, you know, we never really ace it. But that was my feeling. Like, I'm, I'm really understanding this. You know, I'm feeling it in my body, and I'm feeling it in my energetic. And by Monday, you really start over with a brand new layer and a brand new commitment to a new idea and to a new unfolding. So, Lisa, that brings well, me – Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, Don. If I might – That's fine. I'm sorry. If I might just build upon that for a second. The commitment is to show up. However, as Lisa expressed, and you just did, because each week is a new step, therefore a deepening and a furthering of how to sit in meditation, how to train the mind, how to tame the unruliness that's inside us and actually find that as a human being, we are essentially a peaceful, harmonious being. So that can only build upon itself in the same way that a flower or a plant, you know, it has to put down roots, then it puts up a stalk, then it puts its leaves, etc., and the same is so with meditation. The other, the other analogy is to literacy. If we really stopped and thought about the years that went into learning simply our ABCs and how to make rudimentary words, it's phenomenal because now, of course, we are not only completely literate people, but every day that literacy brings new gifts. And that's the exact same with meditation. Mm, Indeed, indeed. Except when we try to say (laughs) methodological. That's when we just take a long, slow, deep breath. (laughs) (laughs) So, Lisa, what was your what was the particular step that resonated with you the most? Was there one that really hit home for you? There were definitely a couple that really hit home, and and what comes to mind is something I'm really going to echo what Donna just said, so this is really kind of this uh, perfect alignment happening here in this conversation. Learning the practice from the beginning uh, as a linear experience was just very exciting because the spiritual path just gets clearer and clearer through the 14 steps. Mm -hmm. So the third step, flow, is one of my favorites. Uh, because, you know, again, going back to the simplicity, it is such a, I think that's a huge takeaway from maybe this whole show is that there really is, um, there's no, there's not a lot of complex, well, there is a lot of complexity, but you start with simplicity and the, and that's the breath. So when you begin to relate the simplicity of the breath to the rhythm of everything in your experience, it's magical. Um, it's magical because it's simple and it's supremely complex all at the same time. So what I'm finding in my life is you can always come back to the breath. You can get your bearings and start the flow again. You, the flow is the interactions within yourself and within uh, the, your, your interactions with everything around you. Yeah. And, so and flow, it, it, yeah. 
it doesn't end, huh? I mean, the, w- life is always flowing around us, and we're either going with it or we are working against it. <laughs> right, and I think that everyone knows that to some extent, but when you start to really internalize the process of the 14 steps of meditation, you just you just start to see it everywhere. You just start to see um, how everything interconnects with everything and how you can uh, and what your place is in that. Mm. And the other step, if we um, do, we have time for me to tell you my other favorite step. Well, we're going to go to a break in a, in a minute. Uh, it's halfway through the show, but I would love to just say that I I so appreciate hearing you say um, that the ways that you see it in the world around you, and it's certainly the tantric aspect of the practice. Mm-hmm. Um, in that, life is happening all around us. Here we are. We're in it. We're moving through it, and. What I love as well about the practice indeed is that 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 particular step of the week can be taken off the cushion and it's really just about everywhere you look in your life you can sort of you hear the mantras you hear the beautiful sort of sentences that you hear throughout the practice and we'll come back to those throughout the day yes. through the week and your week really does unfold around a theme it makes it makes for actually a really adventurous week. <laughs> So, Lisa, I I would love to, I'd love to hear uh, about another step. We're going to go to a break, and when we come back, uh, more with Tim, myself, Donna, and Lisa. The new era of financial planning is upon us where it is just as important to focus on your inner wealth game as it is your outer wealth game. Would you like to be in the forefront of this new groundbreaking financial movement? Lynn Brown, award-winning financial planner, energy coach, and international radio host, will share real, actionable money wisdom infused with empowering tips, fear-busting exercises, and money-growing magnetism. Are you ready to create your fully financially healthy life? Join Lynn for this free two-hour full-spectrum financial planning workshop in Bellevue, Washington on January 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. Register by January 5th as space is limited and will fill up fast. Call in today at 425-372-4749. That's 425-372-4749. Light food and beverages will be included. See you there. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. I'm Steve Kramer. And I'm Tim Darter. And I just want to let you know that uh, some of the music you've been hearing uh, before and after our segments is by a wonderful guitarist named Tom Yoder. 
And we are going to have him on the show in the new year. We've had so many musicians, huh, Tim? We've had had singers and songwriters, and they've been such a treat. So music and sound is such an important part of our lives and actually a part of meditation. And so we thought we'd play some of his music. He's got a beautiful Christmas album. So TomYoder.com, and that, that CD can be found on iTunes or CD Baby. Uh, Tom Yoder. So we are joined with uh, Lisa Rose and Donna Mitchell Moniak. And Lisa's just, as we were in break, Donna was saying that, that, that it's just gold hearing Lisa. It's not often that we really talk to someone who has joined the practice from the beginning and has really moved the whole way through it, that we have this kind of conversation going. So it's really delightful and we're really happy. Um, and Donna was saying that there's a livingness, and there's that word again, you know, there's a livingness to to her sort of experience of the practice and as we're hearing her talk so indeed lisa yeah and and lisa right before break um you were going to fill us in on another step that really had a significant impact on you through the practice yes so yeah flow is flow is the one that i got initially i was excited about every step i have to tell you and um but interlude and and i have to it's interlude is step seven of the practice of living awareness and uh, when we, when I saw that word, um, when we we're on step six, I was sort of thought, hmm, okay, I know what interlude is, okay. I was absolutely delighted by that step because my interpretation, Donna, tell, you know, please feel free to to jump in. You are my teacher. For me, interlude is the idea of allowing space, and that resonated with me. It was a lesson that was waiting for me to be learned um, in the first two steps of the practice. We learn how to access space within our minds. Um, at least that's how I experienced it. And the mind that is alive with, with ideas. And we learn to settle and quiet the mind. That's in the very beginning of the practice. It's a prerequisite to continuing um, towards the, the, the other steps. Uh, for me, allowing space is quite profound. It can mean so many things. Um, first, within the sacred space of meditation. And then within the space of our daily interactions out in the world. Nice. Indeed. <laughs> Go on, Lisa. I'm enjoying this so that's, much. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's, uh, that's sort of my interpretation of interlude. It's space. And for me, again, a message that was so waiting to be revealed to me, I guess is the best way to, that I can say it. So <laughs> and I, I would just, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I would just say that, yeah, that the, for listeners who might not realize, we go through six steps of the practice and then we hit seven, which is sort of the middle ground of the entire practice. And we reach this place called interlude. And not a whole lot is said. It's really sort of this moment where we just allow the space that you've already created. And you kind of get to that step thinking, what's the next step going to be? And you realize it's kind of not really a step at all. But as I'm hearing from you, it's really the most one of them was one of the most mm-hmm. profound steps. And so we've been talking about ways that, that, that we experience that in our day to day. And I have found that that step certainly is uh, goodness if we all can take a time out or actually just throughout our day allow for space. I'm wondering if you had that experience or how you might have taken that particular step off the cushion since it resonated with you so well. That's, that's a really good question. I, I think that um, – you know, for me, allowing space, maybe this is why I got so excited about interlude. For me, allowing space means being less reactive. And this is one of the primary reasons that I meditate. And um, it's an important theme for me personally. I guess it would be for a lot of other people as well. <clears throat> so here's a simple example. Driving in traffic, it's very easy to get to feel reactive, right? Um, you're on a timetable. The car ahead of you is going um, under the speed limit. Um, or in my case, maybe they're going just the speed limit and I'm getting really irritated. Huh. I can get keyed up. <laughs> um, when, you, when meditation is a daily practice, you can start in the moment while you're driving that car to access those tools and what we say off the cushion. You can retrain yourself to breathe in that moment. And it, it, it absolutely takes practice. It's not, I'm not saying it's easy. But I have begun in those moments to be able to breathe, to create the space, first create the space in my brain and breathe, and then um, just maybe slow down and leave space between you and the next car. Mm. So for me, that's a great example of interlude. It's being less reactive. And my, my final point on that, and still on interlude, 
is creating space has been a wonderful parenting tool for me. Um, I have found that uh, I'm a high verbal mom. I have a 14 year old boy. Um, that combination does not always lead to a positive outcome. Um, I think moms are often sort of, you know, yapping at their kids and uh, <laughs> leaving space in those interactions with my son in dialogue um, with, with, with my son and even with other people. Um, it can have amazing results. If I can center myself and breathe, again, come back to my breath when I want to fill that space with words, when my brain is overactive, um, I've had very, very amazing results. Leaving that airspace, um, in those times, my son will almost always start to share his thoughts and ideas, and it's magical. It really works. And, um, and, and I guess that's the perfect example of how meditation is life-changing for me. That's um, that's how I would sum it up. Wow! Yeah, beautiful, uh, really beautiful. And we all, you know, in this fast-paced world, we all can remind ourselves to sort of just take a break, take a deep breath, pause, <laughs> interlude, peaceful abiding. You know, it's the it's the first half of the practice is really a, a shamatha practice, which is peaceful abiding. And so, you know, any time we can bring in that into our day certainly is gold. Indeed. So I thought that um, it would be fun to, since you're sort of talking about the steps that you really enjoyed, I thought it would be fun for us to sort of talk a little bit about some of the guests. I know um, I've heard from both of you that you've listened to many of the shows and really enjoyed a lot of our guests. And, you know, we started this this round really focusing and sort of meditating ourselves on on. Who might it be? What kind of person is out there who might emulate each step? And it really brought uh, such uh, it, it brought such depth to each step and such enjoyable conversations with people who actually were expressing the keynote of that step um, really uh, you know on their own. It was like it was like it comes so natural to them, and it's how they found have found their way. Um, we had a nutritionist, we had a researcher, we had an acupuncturist, a songwriter, a lawyer, voice teacher, the list goes on. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to just go through each step and, and just sort of talk a little bit about what that meant to us. And I'm sure both, uh, Lisa and Donna can sort of rem remember that step themselves and what came forward. So the first step we had, uh, Lori Warren, who, who was the nutritionist, a nutritionist, yeah, and so it, it was all about language with her and diet versus food lifestyle. You know, she didn't like us using the word diet; it was all lifestyle, so that it was something you put in place and actually carried forward with you. It wasn't just something you were trying to accomplish for a short. That was one of my. It was one of my favorite shows. I loved Lori's show. Yeah, yeah, she was a delight. She certainly made us all smile. But boy, it was funny to to hear, you know, I kept saying diet. I kept saying, <laughs> and so if you're on a diet, and she was just getting so beside herself, it's a food lifestyle. And it was perfect for the first round because it was really about how much, what's behind our choices. You know, this word to so many causes contraction and actually this idea that it just doesn't work. And who wants to go into the beginning of anything? You know, it's the beginning of a meditation practice with something we're contracting around. And she kept trying to bring us back to sort of opening it up and in a sense finding a more smiley word <laughs> like, <laughs> like food lifestyle as opposed to diet. So it really was so much about choices and a really, really delightful show. Um, then we moved on to, to Lisa Napora, who was, was intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. And she was tip of the nose. She was step two. Tip of the nose. And she's a researcher and she's working really hard to, uh, she's a systems changer, trying to get meditation into our educational systems and working a lot on leadership. And what was interesting there was language again played a part. What, what word you chose was really necessary in order to get contemplative studies into and break through the the paradigms that exist now in the educational space and we kept relating that to sort of these 
habits that we've got built within ourselves and that by step two, you know, you're really going to have to commit to this. It's going to take patience and you're really going to have to find the right language that's going to work for you. Patience was a big thing. She kept bringing up patience. It just takes time. Systematic change takes time. And we realized how cool it was that, you know, if you are committing oneself to meditation, as Lisa, you said, I'm not one who will often really commit to things and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to say, I'm going to be patient with myself. You know, I'm going to just find the right space and the right time and I'm going to rebuild this system or I'm going to pull it apart a little bit and put it back together. So uh, beyond that, the, the third show was with an acupuncturist and we did flow. That was your stuff and it, your favorite step. And it was a really fun show because we had an acupuncturist who just took a big fall yeah. and she hurt her back and, and she had to have, she was the acupuncturist who needed acupuncture and it was really fun. Um, she was really, really dynamic. Yeah. And she, you know, she showed us with five element acupuncture, how, Restoring flow isn't just on the physical level in acupuncture. It could also be at the mental and spiritual and emotional levels. Yeah, and, and learning to flow in and out of those various levels. So really realizing that the human body is something quite dynamic and our, our, our energy systems are, are quite complex. And she did just a wonderful job of, of really showing us the way that everything is relational and really, really a fun show. So we're at a break. We're going to take a break and come back and we're going to talk a little bit more with Lisa and Donna and, and just review some of the fun moments of the practice of living awareness. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Are you ready for a radical shift in your way of being? Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Awakened Living Radio is a show dedicated to helping you embrace a life filled with profound peace, connection, and happiness. T.J. Woodward is passionate about helping you find your clarity, balance, and purpose. Join co-host T.J. Woodward and Dr. Pat Basile on the first Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific Time for Awakened Living Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Ballard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Ballard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you ever consumed with the idea that something needs to change? You hear Oprah and other inspiring people talk about living your authentic life, and yet it's much easier said than done. Duda, the kick-ass muse, has crafted a world-renowned coaching platform that will help you get clarity on the issues you face, take bold risks, get back your confidence, and brave your fears. To learn more and work with Duda today, visit kickassmuse.com. Almost everyone at some time in their lives ask themselves, what am I? Most of our questions are ego-generated and simply don't address the problem of our false self. It's time to relax your ego and embody your soul. Dr. Dan Cohen, neurologist, inventor, and author, has created tools to awaken a new way to transform from who you thought you were into what you truly are. Visit toolstoawaken.com today. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. 
And yeah, we've been spending the whole show sort of talking about living awareness. What is meditation and its effects and uh, the effects that this show's had on us. It's been so much fun. Mm -hmm. We've had so many great guests on the show and we've gotten to the end of the round of the practice and we'll be starting sort of a a new a new round of shows in the new year. Yeah, we'll be starting yeah. a new round of the practice of living awareness. That starts on February... Uh, end of January. End of January. We're starting a new round. So spiritfire.com, you can find out about the new round of the practice of living awareness. So some of the great shows uh, that I would just love to bring up that we had, we had a wonderful voice teacher on for step five, which is soften, open, and release, Kiara Duran. She was singing for us on the yep. show. That release step is so important within the practice. Uh, you learn so much about your lungs. You learn about the mechanisms of your body and how good it feels just to let something out. And Kiara was doing these really great sort of voice lessons with us and singing songs and talking about uh, her work as a, a, a voice coach and a sound healer mm -hmm. and, a, and a great organization that she heads up on teaching kids to find their own voice and they sing and they song song right through their whole what, summer camps yeah three-legged chair is yeah. the name of her nonprofit organization and it's just really fun little kids finding their voice and uh really coming into their own um a few more that that really ring a bell is is uh for me was asana. We had Martha Henry McDonald on who was a physical therapist talking about alignment. And what a great show. Any listeners yeah. who haven't heard that one, I would say go back and give it a listen. She was talking about the ways in which we need to align and what alignness does to the fullness, how it, how it just adds so much to our experience, what we can let in. And she was talking about when she's in alignment with the patient, actually being able to feel and sense on every level of their body. She's a physical therapist and can align their bones. She was talking about muscles, tendons, fascia. Then she was talking about feeling their lymph and even feeling the nerves with her fingertips, being able to feel uh, sort of blockages or ways in which your nerves are in distress with her fingertips. And then she's also an esoteric healer, which is an energy healer. So she's sensing your your emotional body, your mental body, your spiritual body, and are all of these in alignment? So from the bone the whole way out to your spiritual body, it was just fascinating and a really fun show. Yeah, and in that we found out my achy shoulder, which I thought was from an injury, was actually possibly related to my liver or gallbladder. <laughs> it was very fascinating. Really fun show. Any other ones for you, Tim? Um, step 11 with ground was Sakaya Blackburn who was a sound healer, and he did um, a powerful sound session live for us, which was really astounding. Yeah, really, really wonderful. Uh, he, he, he was doing some chanting, and he had a drum, and we realized that when you're on talk radio and you don't talk, there's not much ground there. <laughs> he, he did a 20-minute meditation and sort of a, a sound healing session with us, and we uh, at the end, we were speechless. We were sort of, Tim and I were swaying in our seats and we were just speechless. And our producer came on and said, guys, are you there? it's talk radio. We got to talk. So it was, we found our ground very quickly. And Luminous Perception was another wonderful show and such a great step in the practice. Oh my, well, they're all so juicy. But when I just tap into the energetic of the steps and then I tap into the energetic of our guest, it just was really, really lovely. Uh, she is a writer and, a, and an intuitive. Her, she wrote a book on children diagnosed with autism. And Tammy that Duncan. Yeah, That's Tammy right. Duncan. And that show was just great. That was uh, Step 10, Luminous Perception. Um, really just learning how to make complex concepts really, really practical and really applicable across the board and how to sense with our intuition and not doubt just trust within ourselves and trust all trust what comes to us trust what comes to us in a meditative state and when we bring our meditative state into our everyday and realize that that you know perception is so much bigger than we than we really um sometimes enjoy mm -hmm. and sometimes can take that for granted so perception what's out there the full moon is coming up Donna, I'd love to hear a few words from you. We have a full moon meditation coming up. The full moon is Christmas Day. And just because I have you with us and we're talking so much about this sort of how does it work with Spirit Fire and with the radio show and our guests and just how all of this works together, 
we every month we have a full moon meditation. They are certainly of the most popular meditations we've got through Spirit Fire. And so I just would love to hear from you a little bit what you think is behind that and what we might what we might um, turn to in this full moon. I think that you just used a word that was quite applicable to respond to your question, and that was perception. Part of the practice, of course, is that from the get-go, from smile, we are opening up to the softer side of being a human being. You know, our life kind of braces us, and we have to charge through, and we have to be directed and drive fast on the road and get get things accomplished. But the practice of living awareness opens up the fuller range of our perceptions, our sensations, and our, therefore our livingness, such that we end up opening more of ourself. And that leads to the full moon. The full moon is an opportunity when exactly that is asked of us to open to the full range of what is going on inside that represents the moon and what is the potential, the full potential of our energies, of our capacity, of our service in the world. What can I as a single human being and what can humanity as a whole, when we're organized, when we're flowing in our highest light, what can we accomplish? And that rep is represented by the sun. So you have the changeability of the moon that waxes and wanes, just like our emotions, our clarity, our patience and impatience, our achievements and our non-achievements. That's, a, that's the moon. And then you have the sun. The sun is always brighter. It always is somewhere illumining the world. And that represents a a soul or a higher nature, that kind of thing. So at a full moon time, pretty much all through human history, human beings have acknowledged that there is this alignment. Go back to what Martha said. There is this alignment between our everyday self, the fluid, flexible, changeable everyday self represented by the moon and how it can be made full of a greater light represented by the sun. And thus we meditate. The last thing I would offer is that, you know, the world is the world is in trouble and yet essentially human beings are people of goodness and so all around the world there is all these inquiries and attempts to do something positive and to make choices that affect positive interactions that bring forward the um, full range of the interconnectedness of life and certainly a full meditation whether one does it through spirit fire or one does it through any other online or in-person situation. One is actually adding to the positive telepathic consciousness currents of humanity. And that, I think, is one of the primary reasons why people do them and why certainly for Spirit Fire, it is a fairly well-populated live meditation. Wow, beautifully, yes. beautifully well said. And I don't have any more to say to that. That was just so, so eloquent. I think we can leave it at that. And I just want to thank you, Donna, for, you know, certainly being a light and a light to us all and such a, a contributing so much, you know, because so much with the practice. And um, and thank you, Lisa, for, for your beautiful words. So beautifully said. It was uh, just a treat to have you on today. Really appreciate hearing it firsthand. It goes such a long way. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you, Lisa, and thank you, guys. All right. So thank you for joining us on Spirit Fire Radio. We hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. And um, again, beautiful Christmas music by Tom Yoder. And great holidays to you all. Thank you so much, Donna. And thank you so much, Lisa. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 noon Eastern, for your weekly guide to meditation and living with awareness. 
Join hosts Tim Darter and Steve Kramer and discover the ways that consciousness is being cultivated in everyday life. Connect to your day in a whole new way and find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more about Spirit Fire, visit spiritfireradio.com. 